So 343 just dropped an Inside Infinite development update. This update goes into details about BTB, the three modes for Academy, a ton of information on challenges and progression, as well as some campaign unlocks. And it looks like we'll have back-to-back -back weekends of Halo Infinite flighting, but with some specific times tied to it. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I definitely wasn't expecting a huge blog update going live for us guys, but it did and I'm going to try to break it all down for you guys as best as I can. Now I do have timestamps for this video, so if you want to jump around to the specific spots you want to know more about Halo Infinite, that option is there for you. So for the TLDR of everything, it's going to be back-to-back -back weekends of PvP flighting. This weekend is Arena 4v4 PvP, while next weekend is BTB focused, but both weekends will have training mode and weapon drills available during the off hours of the flight. Now, if you want to know some specific details about BTB, they go into a lot of information when it comes to progression and unlock system and challenges as well, and exactly what time you will be able to play PvP during these flights. So I suggest you stick through the whole video. If you guys like these news and informational videos and want to see some more content like this, make sure you tap that like button as it really does let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it really does help out the video and channel. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, guys. Make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So in this first section, I'm gonna go into BTB as it's gonna be a big focus with this flight. And it seems like there's some changes with the way weapon spawns, especially with the way vehicle spawns. It seems like it had kind of more of an escalation kind of aspect to it. Some new modes coming for BTB and some different kind of changes and a unique thing we've never had for BTB before. And it seems like they have a bit of a hint towards a classic map potentially returning, but let's just jump right into it. One thing that sounds very different for BTB and Halo Infinite is the way that vehicle spawning works. Now we do know they're gonna be doing like this Pelican system, but it seems like there's gonna be like kind of an escalation throughout the map, much different than our traditional, which is just like, all the vehicles are on the map and they kind of spawn in roughly like a three minute interval whenever they blow up. So it seems like every three minutes there's some tanks, every three minutes there's some warhogs, some ghosts and things like that. Well, it's not going to be like that with Halo Infinite. Now I'll quote it here specifically saying, as pelicans drop in vehicles, they will at first start dropping your standard ground vehicles. But as the match goes on, they will start dropping in more powerful vehicles air vehicles and eventually tanks. We wanted more powerful vehicles in the sandbox to really feel special and create a moment in the game that can change the flow depending on what vehicle is brought in. Now this is a huge departure from our traditional BTB experience. Again, like this is just a like change and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it because with currently BTB, there's always kind of like this, I'll get it next time kind of feeling like say like someone jumps into a tank or something like that in BTB. And you're like, oh, I missed out on it, but I'll get it later on in this match. Well, it sounds like in this one, it comes towards the end of a match, and maybe there might be only be one opportunity. And if you don't get that tank, well, then you're just not going to be able to drive a tank in BTB. Now, if this is something that is worse or better for the game, I don't know. We'll just have to wait till next weekend where we get a chance to flight it. And it sounds like we'll have three modes that we'll be able to have within this flight Classic Team Slayer capture the flag, and a brand new mode called Total Control. How exactly Total Control plays out? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. An interesting change for BTB is how equipment works as well. In the bot preview that we had the previous flight, that everything you picked up at a piece of equipment, if it had multiple uses, it was most likely three uses. While in BTB, you have up to five uses depending on the equipment as well. So maybe more powerful equipment will have less options, but we might see something like the grapple shot have up to five uses instead of the arena three uses so that's pretty exciting we'll see how that plays out a really interesting game mechanic they mentioned here for one specific map there seems to be like weapon caches or something like that you can unlock within a match stated here in the blog update in one map we even have some new ways for players to get a cache of power by interacting with the map a whole new way with your personal AI. Now, I'm making the assumption that it's involving the map fragmentation that we've seen previously, as it's the only BTB map that is mentioned within this blog update, so we might only have one map to play on. Of course, it's not confirmed or denied, but essentially 343 added in loot caves to BTB. Let's see how it plays out. And within this blog update, I just want to put a little tinfoil hat on this one because they mentioned the map coagulation three times within this blog update. And I'm just kind of finding odd that like 
multiple developers mention coagulation as like these epic moments that they've had in traditional Halo. And the one other map that was mentioned in here that, and the only other map that was mentioned for previous BTB experiences was the map Ragnarok, which is kind of a spiritual successor to coagulation Blood Gulch because that was kind of the initial idea, at least that's what Bungie said, of the map Valhalla. So it's 343 like subliminally like adding into our minds that like Blood Gulch, Coagulation, Valhalla, Ragnarok, or some version of those maps is going to be put into Halo Infinite. I might be just putting, putting on a tinfoil hat, but it just seems odd that like that map in particular was mentioned so many times within this blog update. This next section, we're going to be talking about the newest element to Halo's franchise, and that is the Academy for Halo Infinite. With the Academy, they talk about the three modes that will be coming with it, the experience you're going to have with Halo Infinite's multiplayer for the first time you log into the game, details on training mode, and what's going to happen with the Academy post-launch. So let's get right into it. Unlike Last Flight that just had weapon drills, that's the only mode that we had for that, we're going to have three separate modes for the Academy. One is going to be the tutorial mode which is going to be kind of i think the first login experience that we mentioned earlier and that we're going to go into more details in just a second here weapon drills are returning but they've been fixed up a little bit from the last flight as well as training mode which is a new experience which we touched on previously 343 dev david ellis goes into the experience of what it's going to be like when you first time launching halo infinite saying the tutorial is a unique linear mission where players are introduced to spartan commander Lorette. Agrina and explore the grounds of the Avery J. Johnson Academy of Military Science. Here you'll complete a series of objectives to help acclimate players of all skill levels to the world of Halo Infinite. We want players to come away from the tutorial with a greater sense of what it means to be a Spartan within the Halo universe and how they can be an example for the rest of humanity. Now, training mode is something completely different that we haven't had yet, and it seems to be kind of like a custom game with bots kind of experience, but you can kind of tweak it how you'd like. Say if you want to jump onto the map like Behemoth with unlimited ammo with a sniper rifle with zero risk of dying, and you can swap out with like a shock rifle or anything else like that on the fly, well, you can do just that. Though it looks like training mode is going to be a solo experience. It's something you can't bring your friends into as well, but they do mention this, that it looked like to be something to bring in post-launch, along with vehicle drills coming in as well. Finer tuning of bots, so say you can like turn off grenade throwing or something like that for the bots, and also talking about like weapon drill leaderboards where you can compare yourself versus the community and also versus friends as well. And oh boy, this next section, progression, challenges, and customization, guys, they went into an insane amount of detail. I think it's because of all the feedback that we've had recently about how progression is going to work within Halo Infinite, and they go into a lot of information about this. Saying that at launch, Halo Infinite will feature one primary progression path for players and that's tied to the battle pass and to make sure i don't mess up the words here we have it straight from the blog guys saying that the pass which includes avenues for both premium and free unlocks will offer a large array of cosmetic content like helmets visors armor coatings and etc along with a few consumables like double XP and challenge swaps, which are unlocked by earning XP via completion of challenges, which we'll get into a little bit later. Every tier of the pass will require the same consistent amount of XP to unlock from the beginning to end, so regardless of whether you're working to unlock tier 2 or tier 52, each unlock across the 100 tier pass will require the same amount of XP. And of course, the battle pass does not expire. You can go back and progress however you want. So our first confirmation that's a 100 tier battle pass, which I kind of assumed, but that's the first thing we've heard about the actual number. 343 also states that Halo Infinite will also offer special limited time event passes. Free special passes are only available during specific event periods and include a separate track with separate rewards that are often tied to unique armor cores for that given event. For example, events can be available for one week, multiple weeks, maybe just a weekend. They mentioned that the marquee event for season one, which is not gonna be the only event for season one, is called Fractures Henry, which is how players will be able to unlock the Yoroi Samurai armor core. And to get a better idea how, how often these will be around, saying that this event will be available for all players approximately one week per month during 
during Season 1. The event will come and go throughout the season, but it'll be available for players to make progress on. But each time that Fracture event returns, your progress will carry over, giving players multiple opportunities to unlock all 20 tiers of rewards for that event pass. Again, 343 helping out players with that, that FOMO experience that if you don't complete your week-long event pass, well, it will come back and you'll be able to continue on your progression rather than having to reset the whole thing. This next section, we go into weekly challenges, daily challenges, double XP boost, and how unlocks will work within Halo Infinite. So for the weekly challenges that we have, each week players will be randomly assigned about 20 weekly challenges. 343 states that the exact number has been finalized yet, but probably around that. I have a total pool of several hundred potential options for challenges. And your weekly challenges will come in two different tiers of easy and harder difficulties for your weekly challenges. Of course, the more difficult challenges will reward you with higher XP payouts. A big concern with through this challenge system for XP is that people are worried that like, oh, well, everyone's got the same challenges. We'll all be doing the same thing. It's going to kind of make the gameplay really weird. Well, that's not the case as challenges are tied per character, not to the entire community. They seem to stay here saying that it's extremely unlikely that two players within a match will have the same challenge, like get X amount of kills with a sniper rifle. Now here we have a little bit of a bonus where when you buy into the season pass, saying that by default, all players will receive three active challenges at any given time, but for people who purchase the battle pass will be granted a fourth slot for progression as well. Which yeah, kind of sounds maybe a little unfair to free to play players, but then you also have to find a way to reward players for buying into your pass. So that's I think kind of like a fair balance, honestly. Now this next section is really important when it comes to unlock, saying that when a player has completed all their designated weekly challenges, a final ultimate challenge referring to as like a capstone for the multiplayer tech preview, becomes available and completing that ultimate weekly challenge will grant you some kind of new reward like a coding or an emblem or something like that. Here's an example of 20 challenges that would be given to you throughout an entire week. Again, like I said, there are hundreds of challenges you can receive with things as simple as win a quick play match, that's just one challenge, or complete a big team battle match with maybe more specific things like kill enemy sparrings with a battle rifle 15 times. And they use the example, if you completed all that, you're Ultimate challenge would be like kill enemy spawns with headshots in PvP 15 times to so get the reward of the Abbey Lime sniper coating or something like that. So you can see like even with these weekly challenges, yes, some of them are a little more difficult or specific than others, but they're really not that much of a challenge where it would really be something that would be skill gating from people being able to unlock things. Now, daily challenges are kind of what gonna replace your per match XP as it seems like it'd be pretty straightforward. Or basically it's gonna be play a match, earn some XP. But they do mention there's two stages. One's going to be kind of like you're just like for initial play session, play a match, get some XP. But if you have extended play sessions, they might up it to like play two games or something like that. Essentially a way for those grinders out there to not get too far ahead of everyone else within the battle pass. Now there is a, seem to be a somewhat of a limited amount, but even Unishike mentioned that they would, would be very surprised if someone can get through it because they specifically mentioned here saying it would take about 16 to 18 hours of playing and eventually winning before you would actually run out of daily challenges. And they mentioned XP boosts as well. And these XP boosts will provide double XP for whatever challenge you complete. Now there is a set real timer of 30 minutes in real time. So it's not 30 minutes of game time. It's just 30 minutes of just play time or just time when you have the game open. And 343 does respond to the concerns of the challenge system being your source of XP and progression. And they said that they were looking for expanding the multiplayer progression offerings is something that the team is looking into but they're looking forward to continuing to evolve the experience post launch so the challenge system is here to stay for your way to progress through the battle pass but again like they're looking into ways where it seems like 343 might want to have a little more control over progression as now it's being monetized but it does sound like effectively like these daily challenges will be like your per match xp so it really might just be the same thing but different again once the flight comes around here guys i'll be releasing videos on it to show you like how the whole progression system really works now this is all great news and everything but when can we actually get a chance to play this flight well you need check mentions here in the development update that we have two separate weekends we have this weekend of september 23rd through the 26th and then next weekend september 30th to october 3rd so back-to-back -back weekends of playing some halo infinite multiplayer hell yeah but like i mentioned earlier in this video guys that the first weekend will be arena 4v4 gameplay experience 
and then next weekend will be BTB 12v12 experience. So to recap everything that's going to be in this flag, guys, so the first one's going to be Social Arena, including objective modes and new map on Sunday, September 26th. I'm assuming that new map will most likely be Behemoth, as they mentioned it within this development update, and we didn't have a chance to play Behemoth in the last tech preview. I mean, even like the concept art right before talking about everything, like this looks like Behemoth that we saw in the, in the reveal trailer. So I'm assuming it's going to be Behemoth. Bot Arena is also going to be available with this. Big Team Battle is going to be available the following weekend, September 30th through the October 3rd. And also with three modes on Fragmentation, which is like, seems to be like maybe the only BTP map we'll have. Throughout the entirety of the flight, guys, for each weekend, you'll have training mode, weapon drills, customization, battle pass stuff, and also Halo Waypoint you can play around with during these off hours during these play sessions, which we'll go into right now. Talking about the play sessions that each day of the flight will have two separate play sessions. One is going to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is all Pacific Standard Time. That's when matchmaking will be available. The reason why they're separating these times out is so that it funnels players down to specific times to jump on and play so they can stress test their systems. And with the flight being shut off on Monday, September 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And by the way, the flight will be able to be downloaded on Thursday evening as well. So hopefully that might lighten up the download a little bit and traffic trying to get people to jump in and download the game because that was a huge issue with the last flight preview. And then the following weekend is BTB and Arena. The Thursday evening of September 30th is when the flight actually turns on and then training mode with weapon drills will be available. Then Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be your same times of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard. Again, look online and figure out what your time zone differences are. On that Sunday, surveys will be sent out and these surveys are super helpful for 343 guys. I highly suggest you take the time to fill them out. And then on Monday, October 4th at 10 a.m., the flight closes. And then Wednesday, October 6th, the Halo support site closes down as well. So you get your last couple days to actually file in your flight bug. But before the flight happens, guys, we have a big day happening on Wednesday as well. We're going to get a nice blog update kind of detailing everything that's going to be in this flight as well as a live stream, much like we did last time. Pretty much doing the same thing, but showcasing all the new information and having a chance for the 343 to really talk to the community about all the changes that are coming with this flight. There's a lot of changes that have already been made and what to expect for the upcoming weekends of playing Halo Infinite's multiplayer. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen. We're here got a playlist for all my Halo news and informational videos. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.